I want to make a review of a Terranos game, but uh, where to start? Rune Age, Descent, Runebound, Battle Lore, Descent, Rune Wars. Wanted everything! Review all the games! Hello! Rune Wars, a fantasy battle game or warfare of, of fantasy. Undeads and elves and humans and dwarfs, not dwarfs, but still, those kind of races. It's a fantasy game. So, let's open this space box and... Oh, oh yeah. I forgot there was so much in it. Oh, I have to sort this out. Oh. Well, let's roll review. Hmm. Hey, uh, Takras. Could you set up the game for us first? No, I cannot. You have to be here yourself, you piece of... Send. Yeah, I didn't send that. But okay, uh, you cannot set up this game at a, in advance. You have to be all the players there, because the, the setup is actually part of the game. Rune Wars is set in the world of Terranoth, or Runebound if you want. And that I kind of like with the Fantasy Flight games, they're sticking to their own IP. So they have a fantasy world and they're sticking to it, and when I open this game I can recognize a lot of the units and the factions. So we have the, the Khan, the humans, or the Uthics and Orcs, and Latari, the elves, and I can never remember the Undying uh, race, but still, I like a lot to recognize uh, the factions. So, each faction is conveniently packed in their own bag, that's my choosing, and it's easy to set up and just everything back because it's a lot of components it is but each faction plays very very differently so let's check out how this game actually plays but first we have to set up the game and you have a lot of tiles here a lot of them and uh, these cards represent these tiles so we shuffle this deal two to each player and then we have to in turn order place at one tile each until we have two tiles on the board and then the star player will decide the location for the starting races so, the thing is, the star player places these around the map, and he chooses last way to place it, so everything has to be balanced, kind of. We don't do random stuff here, but everything has to be decided, and I like it. So, and this is a reason why I cannot prepare the game beforehand, because I would, of course, do it in my advantage, maybe. <laughs> but these tokens here, these amazing tokens, they are used only for this step. So they have these huge tokens for this one thing, and I like it. If you played this game before or seen it, you might have noticed a new component that isn't in the game. And these to tokens here, they represent activated areas. I have made and designed a 3D printed these tokens here instead, just because they are easier to spot on the battlefield. So You see this much better than a small token. So. If you want to try this yourself, just check out this uh, Thingiverse link here. And uh, hopefully I can put it in the notes as well in, under the video, but we'll see. Anyway, just type this manually and you can get this uh, design and download it for free and uh, try it yourself. And uh, I highly recommend painting it because, yeah, you you should paint them just to spot the difference. But anyway, they for me, I think they're very cool to have and they really enhance the visuals of the game. The game is huge, you know, but still, it's fairly easy to play, actually. So, if you want to recruit some new guys, you play the Recruit Some New Guys card, or Recruit, of course. If you want to move guys over here, play the Move Guys Over There card. Well, not exactly there, but Move Guys card. So, it's very simple. If you want to get more grain or f f uh, resources, play the Harvest card. So, everything is on the cards. Uh, there is one small thing about the cards, though, They're kind of neat. It is called Supremacy Bonus. Each faction comes with a set of identical cards. The only difference is the graphics. So, we have this, for instance. The, the Uthuk, or the Orcs. They have a hair, the command card. It says Strategize, and what it does. Also, it has, has a Supremacy Bonus. So, the Supremacy triggers if this is the highest number currently in front of me. So if I play this as my first card, I will get the text above and the supremacy bonus. Let's say I played this first, and then I play this afterwards. Then this isn't the highest number anymore. So I don't get the supremacy bonus, I only get the top here. 
So this effect allows you to kind of uh, plan out and uh, guess what the opponent is about to play because you kind of know what they're going for but do they want to sacrifice to go too high or too low to, and lose their supremacy bonus. And I, I like this mechanism here kind of very well because it really makes it more easier to plan ahead and uh, make good guesses at what the opponent is going to do. So we play command cards uh, each round. So a run, what is that? Well, it's a year. A year? <laughs> well, not a real year, of course. But a year is consisting of four seasons. We have the spring, summer, uh, fall, and or autumn, and uh, winter. And uh, each season we play one of the command cards. So the command card I played here will stay on the table, and, and we add a new command card, and both will stay on the table, and so forth, until the fourth command card. And then, at the start of uh, um, spring, we get the cards back on our hand. Hopefully. Because some of these cards have events that don't allow you to take all your cards back. Some will have events that make good harvest. Some have some councils, a wizard, uh, wizard's council, which uh, you make a vote and uh, you can influence something in the, in the game. But in the winter, if you don't have enough food stored, stored up, you will lose units if you have too many on one space. Because there is no access to food in the winter, you have to have it uh, in storage. So this is kind of interesting, and can, you can, with these spaces, try to guess what the opponent is going to do, in addition to the command cards and the supremacy bonus. So there is a lot of uh, guesswork here, but you have a lot of information to go on as well. But at the summer, we have a hero phase. So we have heroes here as well as basic units. These neutral hero pieces don't really belong to a faction, so they can belong to any one player. Uh, they do have a loyalty though against the evil or good side. So orcs and humans are the evil and good, if you get my meaning. Uh, and they will roam around the map completing quests. They don't really participate in battles. But the quests are like this. They tell you what to do and where to go. If you complete them, they will give you items and stuff. And they also increase the odds of getting more dragon runes. Because ultimately, this game is about getting six of these dragon roots in your place. So at the start of the game, with three players, there are only actually three dragon runes in an, on the entire map. So this, for instance, is not a dragon rune, but this is. So with three dragon runes and you need six, you, need, you certainly need to go around with heroes doing quests and getting more dragon runes. So dragon runes come into play by heroes and some events and uh, something else as well. But they are hard to come by, and of course, they are a very precious resource of the game, because that's, it. that's how you win the game. So as you probably can see, the heroes are very useful in this game. But every summer, we are able to move the heroes, and each player can have three heroes each at a maximum. So of course, the summer season will take a long time to play. We all activate all our heroes, and then we do the command. So the summer is the longest season, but still, we. It's a very, very exciting season as well, because that's where you get to do stuff with the heroes. Complete quests, get more dragon runes, get more items, sabotage for your enemies, depending on the items you have, and so forth. So it's very important. So these don't really contribute in combat, but you can add them if you dare or want to. So combat. So let's say you're in a battle. You take all your units from that field, the battlefield, and you add them here on the correct spot. So here and uh, here, and the Pegasus here. So, uh, this number here tells you the initiative, so when they attack. At the first here, there are no, no units, but if my enemy has units here, he will attack first. And then, all the level 2 units will attack. So if we both had level 1s, they will both attack at once, simultaneously, so they can easily kill each other at the same time. So this, this order is very important to when you're going to attack. Be, and besides, some of these units might be dead before it's their turn, or they can be routed, like this, inactive, before it's their turn as well. So you have to manage this very well and compare yours to the, whatever units you're going to attack, and have luck with the dice. Oh, sorry, no dice. This game comes with no dice. Instead, it has a deck of cards. So let's say I have this unit. It's going to attack you. Does it hit? Well, let's see. Let's roll the... Uh, I mean, flip the card. Flip the card. We find the matching symbol. It's a uh, uh, rectangle. Here. It's a flag. So, it didn't hit you, but it make you go... 
routed. So, uh, you have to tip, tilt your figure to the side. If I had this figure and attacked with this card, I would have given you 3 damage. So these cards basically tell you if you hit or not. So it's kind of like rolling dice, but instead you are going through this deck and if you're really good to remember these cards, you kind of know what cards are left, right? No. So what I did is print out this handy card from the Geek and it tells you the odds of getting all the types of uh, results depending on the shape. So let's see that the triangle has a 27% chance of hitting something with an average damage of 1. So this is very handy to have. Whew, so this is Rune Wars. Of course, I haven't told you everything about it. This game has a lot to, do, to offer. And of course, with a lot to offer, you have to invest some time to this game. Because a free player game can easily take 4 hours. Uh, because it's a lot of things to do. So, 4 hours with the rules explanation. Uh, first you have the setup, which takes a while. And you have to consider your options and stuff. And then you have the every round, and you have the hero phase, which takes a while. So. But still, you have a lot to think about. What I do will directly um, do, make you do other stuff than you were intended to do in, at the first place. So the interaction level here in this game is very high. I, I like it a lot. And uh, there's so much things to do and so much things to think about uh, playing it. When I play the command card, it's easy. I just do whatever it says and try to make the best of it. But still... Uh, what I haven't told you is these flags, they indicate areas that are activated. So, if you have activated this area here with your units, I know you cannot move these units from there anymore. And those kind of things make this game very strategic. And yeah, there's a lot of trolls and stuff here, so it seems like a typical Ameritrash game, but it really isn't. No, you have the, the dice with the cards, but most of the game is about strategizing and positioning your units and check to see are those are your opponents fighting okay then I can move here am I fighting okay then I have to focus here so you have always to you have to always have to consider your options and there are many many options in this game which I really love so the investment of time is of course an issue and it makes it hard to get on table but when it does it's truly truly worth it this is a great game and if you even add the expansion on top of this it becomes even better this game has so much to offer and it does it so well so i think it's kind of quirky with the dice rolling or card mechanism but pff, doesn't matter it works and with the, this handy sheet here it tells you the odds anyway so it's kind of yeah it's easy so, I, I, got, I don't know how to say this anymore, but this is a highly recommended game from my part. I, I truly love this game. So, with the expansion it adds even more options. You can upgrade more on your base and your your uh, faction has more uh, upgrade available. Or you can you can change the rules of your, uh, your factions. And you can add more units to add more variety and more options as well. So this is a truly good recommendation from me. Okay, uh, this is, is Rune Wars. Thumbs up, two thumbs up. Uh, if you like what I do and want to influence uh, my video reviews or just want to support me, then please check out this uh, Patreon account here and uh, see how you can help. I truly appreciate uh, whatever you can, you can do to help me because I want to make more videos and the more support I get, the more videos I can make. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope I see you again in the next episode of Photographer Reviews. See ya. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.